Hi, it's Dr. Steve from Misericordia University. Today, let's start practicing up and reviewing Excel skills. And let's also start taking a look at how you could use Excel practically in your teaching. During today's online class, Let's open the Blackboard folder with containing the resources and let's look at the following three files, Workshops, Planet Weight, and Population. So to begin, I have gone to the resource files that I made available on Blackboard and I'm starting with the one called Application Workshops. So application workshops, and we're going to perform these various steps on sheet number one. So let me click away from the directions tab into sheet number one. So let's start by, well, first thing I see is I can't see all of the words here. Always remember when you click into a cell, you can look up in the formula bar to see what's actually in that cell. Now I can either increase the size of this by just dragging. So I'm clicking between A and B in this case and I'm dragging around or I can double click and that will give me a perfectly resized uh, perfectly sized for the contents um, width of column A. Now in this case I am going to when I finish this I'm going to um, not include this title I'm going to actually extend this title out so I'm not going to worry about that. In this case, I'm going to drag this back a little more. Now, I'd like to be able to create February, March, April, May, and June. To do that quickly, notice there's a little fill handle. And notice that when I get right over the fill handle, the white cross cursor turns to a black cross, like a plus sign. I'm going to drag that across. So that's called the fill handle and I'm able to drag that across and complete the series. Okay, so we're off to a good start here. Now I'm going to take, I'm just going to plug in some dummy data here. So I'm simply going to copy these numbers. So I highlighted this, did a control C, notice the marching ants. And if I were to do control V, the marching ants remain. If I go somewhere and hit, after copying, if I hit enter then Excel smart enough to know that the next thing I want to do is paste and then the marching ants go away. So in this case I'm going to highlight all of this material. I'm going to go over here and hit enter and I have some dummy data to plug in here. So this is going to be faculty development workshops and the attendance at each of them for a school. All right maybe I'll pretty these up a little bit. Let me go in here and I'll highlight these cells and say right click and say format cells. Remember anything you want to do to cells is going to be found under format cells. So I can go in here and put a color if I choose. When I put a color the lines will disappear. So I might want to go out and put some lines. So border, outline, and the inside lines. Okay that's looking nice. Now to finish this, what I'd like to do is I'm going to take this text here. I'm going to make both of these cells a title. So this one I'm going to make bold. Now I'm going to center them. Now if you don't know how to center, what you're going to end up doing is cutting and pasting this content from this cell and just drop it in some other cell until you find the center. I can't just say center as I did in word processing environments because center, look at that, it centers inside of this cell. Well that's not practical. But what I'll do is I'll click here, notice my title started in column A. I'm going to highlight across the page as far as I want in order to determine a center. Now I look not to the center but rather merge and center. There it is, smack in the middle of that. It's kind of like one large cell now. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Drag across as far as I want in order to determine the center, and there it is. 
Now, if I wanted to add up various items here, like how many people attended during the month of January, I could put some totals down here. So if I wanted to do that, I could do one of two things. Remember that you can start with the equals, and then you, you can start clicking on cells. Like cell, I'm hitting the plus sign, cell, plus cell, plus cell, and so on and so forth. When I finish, I hit enter, and I do get a total here. Now, to make this stand out a little bit, I'm going to say format cells, and I'm going to choose a color. And now, I can take that fill handle and simply drag it across. Now, if I wanted to, I could try, notice I did a manual calculation. I could try the FX button, and that's called a function. It says insert function, and function simply means it's automatic. I've started in this cell where I want the so-called answer to be. I'm going to click the FX button, and I'm going to look up the word sum. And I should find it right in the most recently used area. If I don't, I can always type the word up here in this search bar, and then it will find that for me. But once you use it once or twice, it will appear in the most commonly used. Okay, here's sum. I'm going to click on this little button, and that's going to allow me to go out and select some cells. Notice when I'm doing an automatic function, I do not have to put plus signs in between cells or anything like that. I'm just highlighting a whole range. Now, I can click on that little button. That looks accurate. I'm going to say OK, and I've got it. Now, another way that I could do that is I could go to the FX, and I'll do the same thing. I'm looking for the word sum. There it is. Never trust what's here, because it's most likely going to be wrong. Click this little button that indicates I'm going to go out in the spreadsheet and highlight. Now highlighting cells, instead of pressing this button, I can hit enter. Instead of taking the time to take the mouse down to the OK button, I can just hit enter. So I'll do that one more time. FX, find the word sum. Don't trust this number. Go out and highlight in the spreadsheet. Enter, enter, I'm done. Now, as I did before, I can make these stand apart like I did over here to show that they are totals. I can highlight these, and I can choose a color by right-clicking and saying Format Cells. Notice I can also find a color right here. So I can choose colors at this point if I wanted to. Now I can also take one of these cells, grab that little fill handle, and take them down. At this point, I have, I have created all of the uh, formulas and functions here in order to add up all of this material. If I wanted to protect this against myself so I didn't actually make a mistake later on, like I, I plugged in a bunch of dummy numbers here, dummy data, test data, I can highlight the cells where I want to be able to get back into, how I want to break back in later. So I highlighted cells. I may want to break back into all these windows. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to say Format Cells. I'm going to go up to the Protection tab. Notice everything is locked to begin with. I'm going to unlock these cells. So these now are unlocked. Okay, that means I will be able to go back in here once again when we turn on the alarm. How do I turn on the alarm? So don't forget to do that second piece. If you don't turn on the alarm, the alarm will never go off, and the whole protection thing is, is done. So let me go up to the Review tab. There are several places you can find this. One place you could find it and maybe think about it is, well, I'm done. I'm going to review my work. Click on the Review tab, and I notice it says Protect the Sheet. It also says Protect the Workbook. But normally, uh, most folks will, especially teachers, will go in and say Protect One Sheet at a Time. So, what's the difference between Protect Sheet or Protect Workbook? Well, if I say Protect Workbook, 
notice down here I've got a directions tab and I've got sheet one. If I say workbook, all of these will be protected all at the same time. Now maybe I'm not finished with this other tab called directions at this point. Once I turn on protection, I can no longer get in unless, as I did here, I highlighted certain cells and right clicked and I said format cells, went into the protection tab and I unlocked them. So most teachers, when they're ready to protect, they will say protect just the sheet. Now notice they give you an opportunity to put in a password and do all kinds of different changes here. What I suggest is you're not trying to protect from some like enemy of some sort or terrorist. What you're looking to do is protect against yourself making an error. So do not put a password unless you have some reason to do so. And do not change any of the pieces down here. So I just said protect the sheet. I pressed the button. Here it is. Say OK. Do nothing else. Perfect. Now I could go in and I could make changes here if I wanted to. And since these were uh, just dummy data, I can now go in and I can delete all of this. And this is ready to go. And for the next year, when I'm ready to start using this in my school, I'm ready to go and I can change even the names of these, of these seminars. But I can't change anything else that's up here. If I try to go in and change something, I'm trying to type right now, there's the alarm going off. Down here where I have math, there's the alarm going off. So that's a quick review of how we can use some of the basic Excel skills and how we could practically use it in our classroom. I have now opened up the Excel file called Application Planet Weight. And we're going to do all the things that it says here in the instructions and I also have a finished version for you here in the tab called Answers. So I'm clicking on the tab called Wait on Planets, and let's go ahead and let's work on it. So first of all, this is set up to be a teaching application. It's easier for students to be able to visualize things, in, in some cases, some students, to be able to visualize things by working with them. They're more tactile learners. We know that some learners can learn best when they hear, some when they read, some when they actually touch things and manipulate them. So with that in mind, let's create this spreadsheet teaching application. The idea here is to enter a weight. So I'll put in 100 pounds. And we would like to see 100 pounds appear over here so that the students can compare. And then we'd like to see the weight on the different planets, including our moon. So, one thing I'd like to point out is that when you're preparing a spreadsheet for teaching purposes, in many cases, you don't have to do much math or, or very simple math, and sometimes no math at all, in order to use it for teaching purposes. So here it's going to be very simple math. First of all, whatever I type here, let's start with this, I'd like this to appear in this cell. Well, I know that I can type equals and click on this cell up here, C4. And it shows the 100, and whatever I type up here, if I put 125, certainly it appears down here. Now, if I were to simply drag this down, okay, it's not doing exactly what I thought, so let's take a look at why. Equals C4. When I click on this cell, I dragged it down. It said, oh, well, you're going down to the next row, so let's Let's incre increase that. Let's increment that. So it's C5. Here it's C6. Okay, well, that's not what I want to do, so I'm going to delete that. What I'd like to do is I would like to absolutely point to this one cell up here all the way down, and that's known as an absolute cell reference. And recall that I can create this absolute cell reference by either clicking in the formula bar and hitting the F4 key. If I hit it once twice, three times. Notice every time I do that, it changes where the dollar signs are. Ideally, I'd like to have a dollar sign before the C and a dollar sign before the 4. This is an exact absolute reference to that one cell. Now, if I 
forgot about the F4 key. Another way I can do that is simply click up here and I can type in those dollar signs. So I can type in a dollar sign before the C. I can type in a dollar sign before the 4. And that simply means do not change the C and do not change the 4 if I go to drag this down or across. Now let me drag it down and sure enough it stays the same. Notice in all cases if you look up in that formula bar the C didn't change and the 4 did not change. It's one of the rare cases when you do not want the smart copying to take place. You don't want the C or the 4 to change. Okay, now let's convert these over into percentages. I can format anything by going to Format Cells. And I'm going to go down here to Number. I'm going to say this is a percentage. Keep in mind this always defaults to two decimal places, which is what accountants do with money. So 17%. Well, that's kind of cool because if you were to weigh 125 pounds on Earth, you would weigh only 70% 70, 70 of that if you were standing on the moon. So watch the simple math I'm going to do. Equals the 17%. I'm going to put the star key to multiply times whatever this number is. And this number will be whatever is typed up there. And here it is. Let me now drag this down. Now, the one thing I don't like is all of these decimal places. Since it's highlighted, let me fix that. Format cells. Let me say this is a number. Let me specify how many decimal places. I'm going to say two. Now, I don't know what the students are going to type in here. Maybe they'll need a thousand separator. In other words, maybe it'll be over 999. If it's a thousand or above, we should see a comma. So I'm going to turn that on. If a comma is needed, let it show up. Now, as I look at this, students will be able to type in a number, and all of this will change, so they can manipulate this. Now, let's do one more thing. Let's create a chart with this. Okay, I see a problem already. Because in class, remember, I've been saying all along, be careful that everything is contiguous. In other words, all the numbers and the headings, everything touches. It's contiguous data. Here I see a problem. Because I see this line, I see two blank lines going across two rows. Do we need all of that? Well, really, that's going to cause problems. Let's say that I, I wanted to go and add up this column over here. And if I get some blank or average, even more significantly, if I were to average this, it would also include in these blank cells that are in here. When I go to create a chart with this, it's now going to assume, well, here's all of the items to chart. Here's two others, too. They just don't happen to be filled in. That's not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this. I'm highlighting these three rows. I'm going to right-click and say Delete. Oh, now that's much better. Notice how this is touching here. Everything's touching. I have no blank lines, no blank columns. It's all touching. That's going to work. Now, let me go and let me create a chart. I'm going to start with this. Then what I'd like to do is I would like to graphically show the students, here's a bar for what you weigh on Earth, and here's a bar for what you would weigh on that planet. Okay, I'm going to like to skip this right here. Well, to skip that, remember, start by highlighting the first column, because that has the labels for the bars in your chart. Hold down the Control key after you've highlighted so I hold the control key, I now click, and I highlight. I'm still holding the control key, I can click, and I can highlight. That's how you can select non-contiguous columns, so you could skip columns when you're creating a chart. All right, let me go up, and let me say insert. Let me go find a chart type. And I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to move this down a little bit. 
Now that's all looking good. Now I could place a, a title here for this chart. I'm going to say planet weights. Click outside of that. Now, because I'm not creating a grade book, I'm going to be very happy that whatever the student types is going to come in here and alter the numbers here on the scale. So, for example, when we give this to students, if they type 100, when we check out this chart, notice it only goes up as high as 300 pounds. By the way, don't go to Jupiter, <laughs> unless uh, for many reasons, but also because you're going to weigh a whole lot more there. It's going to, you're going to feel a little sluggish on that planet. But students may say, well, my, my teacher is uh, 300 pounds. Now, uh, realize um, your students won't know, so don't ever get offended if they say something like that. Notice how this changes. And we can graphically see the student can manipulate and say, oh, look, the pattern here. Those bars look the same no matter what we type here. They might say, well, my fish weighs two pounds. My dog weighs five pounds. Notice how all of this changes. One last thing. What cell or cells, in this case, should we protect? If the student comes in here and changes any of this math, things are, are going to change in a hurry. And, uh, and the spreadsheet will be messed up for the mass learning tool. Really, this is the only cell that the, that the students have to touch. It says, please enter your weight on the earth, right here. So let me go in. I'm going to right-click and format cells. And I'm going to say protection. Everything is locked, except now this one cell. How do I turn on the protection when I'm ready? Press the Review tab. Say Protect Sheet. Don't touch anything here. You don't need to. Just say OK. Now you're done. If a student goes in and tries to change, oh, they forgot their, their second dog weighs 10 pounds. Sure enough, everything is working, everything's dynamic. If a student tries to change anything else on the spreadsheet, the alarm goes off. That's an example of how you can teach using spreadsheets, and also we're reviewing a lot of the concepts of Excel. I'm now going to work on the Excel file called Application Population. As I look at this file, many times we hear about large numbers. And while students in, in different content areas, while students don't necessarily have to do math on these numbers, uh, it would be very helpful if they could understand the numbers and derive some meaning from them. So let's see how we can use a spreadsheet to help us understand and fathom these large, large numbers in terms of, in this case, population. And we're not going to do any math at all. So we're going to perform these steps. I'm going to click on the tab on the bottom called Population. And here I see three populations. I'm going to blow this up a little more. I'm going to hold the Control key and spin the wheel a little bit so it makes it a little bit larger. Oh, notice what happened here. The numbers seem to have disappeared or changed in some way. But don't be alarmed. If I click on any of these cells, I can see the numbers up top here in the formula bar. What Excel does is to protect you from making an error if, if I make this cell too small. It's not going to show part of a number. So what I can do here is I can either drag this across, or in this case I might double click it. I'll get a perfect size for this. And now, once again, the numbers are restored. They were always there. They just didn't always show for me. I'm now going to make a very small chart. If I'm teaching uh, social studies, if I'm teaching geography, if I want students to understand and fathom the difference between these populations, populations of these different countries, if I talk about millions or billions, a lot of students Frankly, they're just going to zone out. They're not going to really understand what that truly means. So let's chart it. Let's make it visual. Let's keep in mind, different learners learn in different ways. Here's a very simple chart. First of all, I've got one set of labels. I've got one set of numbers. Perfect time to create a pie chart. I'm going to go up and say, insert a chart. You get a pie. 
when I work with a pie chart, first thing I'm going to do, so I don't just rely on the colors to understand which section of pie fits which label down here, I'm going to right click over any part of the pie and say add data labels. Now many times it'll add a, a label that's not going to have a lot of meaning to us. So I'm going to right click a second time and I'm going to say format the data labels. If I don't know what these mean over here, I'm going to click and I'm going to see what shows up. Okay, that one I don't want to use. It says series name. It says the word population. I don't want to use that. Category name. Oh, now that's helpful. Now, I can either leave the numbers, it's the value, or I could put the percentage. Get rid of this. Now that's meaningful. And if I wanted to play with the chart some more, I can just right click over the chart and I could say format the chart area. In this case, I could I could put a little fill in here, place a nice color. Maybe I'll put a little color gradient in here and I could make some changes on the, some of these options and so on. Okay, now, how does this help us in teaching? Well, at this point, I did no math whatsoever. But if I were to talk about a population of 1.3 billion, 1.1 billion, and 3 306 million, most of us are not going to quite fathom all of that. But look at it in terms of a visual. Wow. Look at the size of these countries compared to the population of our country. Huge, huge difference. So here's an example of how we can use a spreadsheet without even any math at all, and it would take us literally five minutes to plug these numbers in and create a chart chart that will really significantly help our students understand this content a whole lot better. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and see you at our next online class.